Good morning, students. I'm excited about our Sunday school time together. And you know what? Sunday school kind of sounds drab uh, when you say it, particularly for students as you think about school, like who wants to go to school. But here's what's not drab. Walking alongside Jesus. There's nothing drab about walking alongside Jesus. And that's, that's what that's at the heart of what Sunday school is, is spending time walking alongside Jesus. And that specifically is what we're doing for Sunday school because we are headed towards um, following Jesus towards the cross as He is headed towards the cross, the greatest act of love the entire world has ever seen. So I'm excited that you're getting a chance to walk alongside us and together with these Sunday school teachers doing just that, walking alongside Jesus. I'm so thankful for them, for Zach and Amelia Player, for Man Conrad, and for Kevin Randall, for them coming and taking time uh, to teach you guys, to spend time with you guys. And so I hope you guys really enjoy this lesson uh, today. Before we get uh, going and I release you guys to Sunday School, I want to give you a few announcements and encourage you in a couple of things. One is our um, Lent devotion book. If you hadn't picked up one, it's never too late. There's two more weeks. And so uh, the Sunday School teachers are kind of beginning this, helping you start. So I want to encourage you to pick one up. Um, that means either stop by the church, even though it's kind of closed, or text me. Um, I will be glad to mail you one to get you one. Um, the second thing is we are connecting with you guys on the daily through Instagram. And so Mondays are Mondays with Maddie. Tuesdays, join us for prayer breakfast. Wednesday, we're going live for teaching on Wednesday night, Living Like Jesus. Thursdays are Thanksgiving Thursdays where we're interviewing a student. Um, and Fridays are Friendship Fridays uh, where we're doing something fun to interact and helping you engage with your, your friends at a distance. And then Saturday is Servant Heart Saturday where we're putting something out there for you guys to serve other people, um, those in need, those in your family, and those kind of things. So please um, check out Instagram. Uh, continue to stay connected uh, with us. And so uh, let's start this Sunday School Out uh, time together with our Center to Saint prayer. You know it. Follow along with us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a son, a daughter. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a saint. You guys enjoy. It's going to be good. We've all seen the movie, well, movies. The hero starts out with an identity crisis, maybe lacking a sense of purpose. Then comes a love interest. Then comes some sort of overarching crisis. Then there's the critical moment of truth, where the hero is told, follow your heart. By doing so, the hero solves the crisis and usually wins the love interest at the same time, which is convenient. Of course, these are fun, feel-good stories, sure, but... Is follow your heart really good advice? More to the point, is it biblical? That's exactly what we're looking at today in, in today's Sunday School lesson. We're back in Luke. We are following Jesus along his path to Jerusalem and to the cross. And this week we're looking at another run-in that Jesus had with the Pharisees. And we'll talk about a parable that he told also. And in both instances, Jesus talks about how we should regard the condition of our own heart. Um, as we talk, you're going to see questions and scripture references pop up somewhere on the screen. I don't even know where. Um, but you can pause if you're with somebody and y'all can discuss those answers or if you're by yourself you can pause and think about the answers or jot down your answers in a notebook whichever you prefer um, we're starting today with luke 16 15. and he said to them you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men but god knows your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. So what we're seeing here is uh, Jesus speaking to Pharisees. He's, he's in, out in the open hearing of Pharisees and they've been heckling him, criticizing him, calling out things to him as he's tried to teach. Um, and you need to also remember that the Pharisees were the lawyers in Judea. They were uh, religious leaders, yes, but also rich, powerful, you know, the, the uh, well-respected authority figures at the time. So here's my question. In this verse, is Jesus backing down from the Pharisees' ridicule? 
No, he, he isn't. And, and this is going to be something that was really surprising to the people listening, because like you said, you know, the Pharisees are, are, are not ones to be questioned. Um, they're, the, they're the ones that, that, that make the laws or have been making the laws for these other people to follow. And so they, uh, you know, the other people listening to this you know, were probably very surprised that, that Jesus didn't, didn't kowtow to their heckling. Sure. And in fact, Jesus tells them directly, God knows your hearts. Now, what does God say about their hearts, according to Jesus? Well, he says they justify themselves before men. And he also goes a little further to say what men think are, is valuable uh, may not be so valuable to God. In fact, he uses the word detestable, which mm. is pretty strong it language. Is. So, you know, I guess the question now is how were the Pharisees justifying themselves before men in this right. instance? Well, we don't get a lot of information about that in these passages, but we do get that a little bit later in Luke 18. So if you'll turn with me to Luke 18, 9 through 14. Luke 18, 9 through 14. This is a parable that Jesus shared. And he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying to this to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, stay, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, that he who humbles himself will be exalted. So here we've got a story of a Pharisee and a tax collector. They're praying at the same time, but their prayers are vastly different. Uh, the first person that we're going to look at is the Pharisee. Well, to me, you know, it seems like the Pharisee is bragging about his wealth, his status, his worship practices, all things that serve to, you know, justify him before men. You know, he thanks God that he's not like other men, you know, such as, you know, he talks about swindlers and adulterers and the unjust. You know, he humble brags about how he fasts twice a week and gives his tithes without fail. You know, he even thanks God that he's not like the tax collector, that he's in the temple he's praying. He's being with. super petty. <laughs> you know, but, you know, t tax collectors were regarded as corrupt, right. you know, so it, it, it was a... a good example of what people would expect to be someone you know on the higher echelon of society versus someone who was considered to be kind of the the gum at the bottom of the shoe as right. it were so it wasn't anything for the pharisee to be well i'm glad i'm not the gum on the bottom of the shoe right. like like this cat over here um because you know tax collectors they weren't like you know people view the irs in a certain way now sure. but these people were actually a lot of the tax collectors of the day were going around skimming people uh you know scamming people bilking them uh skimming theirs off the top sure. and 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 so people didn't really like to see them coming even more so than we don't like to see them come coming today but so you look at the pharisees prayer and you see sort of how gloaty it is um what about the tax collectors? Well, here, this is a man who won't even lift his eyes up to heaven. Um, and instead, he beat his chest and he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, which of these two men does Jesus say is truly justified before God? He says it's the tax collector, which would have been a real shock to the people who were listening to the message there because they probably expected Jesus to end with something that would, that would uh, lift up the Pharisee because that was you know, typical of the social hierarchy at the time. But Jesus says that the tax collector went back understanding what his position was compared to God, that he wasn't God, that he needed God. And uh, the tax collector knew that he needed forgiveness and mercy and he had true repentance. 
he acknowledged that he was a sinner, and the Pharisee never did that. He nope. gave his resume. He, he talked about how he was earning his part, but then he doesn't acknowledge that he's a sinner. So, so the Pharisee is really just lifting himself up. And um, it's not really, I, I want to make sure we talk about this, it's not really that there's anything wrong with the stuff that he's doing. No, I mean, tithing and fasting, and fasting tithing, good that's good things. stuff. Yeah. It's the fact that he was doing them so that other people would look at him and say, oh, what a good religious man you are. And, and, and also he thought that he was earning his way into God's good graces that way. So, uh, you know, my footnotes even say that he was probably praying so that other people around him would hear and if you remember the tax collector that he's saying he's glad he's better than would be with probably within earshot so he's he's not really even praying i would say you know it seems to me like he's just bragging right right so here's here's a question though because it says that uh the tax collector beat his chest and when i think of somebody beating their chest i think like yeah you know right <laughs> So I mean, I guess what's that? What's that about? Right. Like, right. if he's not bragging, what's he doing doing that? Okay. Well, you know, that brings us back to the very nature of the heart. You know, my my footnotes say that the heart by was understood by Jews and early Christians. Uh, it was regarded as the seat of sin, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, by beating his chest, he's not showing a sense of pride in this particular instance. He's identifying, in a sense, that his heart. You know, his decisions, his sinful nature, all of that is the engine behind the failures that place him in, needs of God, in need of God's mercy to begin with. So it's, it's grief is what it is. So if that's the case, if the heart is the seat of sin, then should we really be following our hearts? I mean, no. Uh, in fact, the Bible has you know other things to say on that exact subject. Uh, Jeremiah seventeen nine, for instance, says the heart is deceitful above all things. I'll say that again: the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And you know, it's saying that you know your the nature of your heart on its own is so bad that there's no way that a person can possibly understand how bad it is. <laughs> And so the you know the fact is we sin. We're born with a sin nature, and only through God's mercy and by accepting Jesus' sacrifice and and resurrection can we escape the eternal cause for our sin. And even after we are saved, we struggle with sin oh, yeah. when, as long as we're living on earth. Mm -hmm. So really what these verses are saying is if we are following our hearts, we're really putting ourselves in a dangerous position of temptation. And, um, you know, one of the temptations that we, we fall prey to a lot is valuing our own work, our own good deeds, and um, thinking that what we do is so much better. At least I'm better than that guy. At least right. I'm better than that girl. So it puts you know? us in the very position right. of this Pharisee. Exactly, yeah. like the Pharisee. And uh, what these verses are telling us is it doesn't matter how rich or religious we are. It doesn't matter what we've done or not done. God loves us the same, and he expects us to view him as worthy of praise and not ourselves. That's right. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>